So in this video, I want to do an um, example of a topo study I kind of do to just test various tools. And to start it out, what I'll do is press Q, go to Mesh Tools, and Sphericast, and we'll just jump to a sphere. And I will Shift A, bring out a cylinder, and we'll just use the F9 to make the cylinder face view. Scale it down, and we'll just place it here. And we could just bring this out like so. So there's a couple of ways we could approach unifying this cylinder with the sphere. However, it's important that we uh, go for a particular type of cut here. So what I'll do is pull it back and we'll just perform a difference, which will give us an exact, but I'll press F9 and we'll change it over to fast. And we can also enable auto smoothing, but not via sharpening because you know we don't want to crease the sphere. But the next thing I'm going to do is duplicate this out and we'll just press uh, control numpad minus and do a difference here as well, except I'm going to change this to exact and actually fuck this up. This isn't how this example is supposed to go. However, that is also a interesting shape to try to create in one of these surfaces, but it isn't the shape that we're going for. So let's um, use our Boolean panel and let's change the first Boolean to a union. So we'll just click it, change it to a union, and now we have the shape. And so if we look at our um, Boolean dropdown, it tells us that our first Boolean's on fast and the second one's on exact. And if we were to use the second one on fast and not exact, it's just gonna fall apart. But because exact is a thing now, we can actually take this particular shape a little further than before. So, you know, we're talking about shapes that previously weren't even possible. So if we turn everything off, I still have the cylinder selected, but notice how the exact boolean just kind of broke down, even though these two meshes should theoretically blend perfectly, but they're just not. And we could, you know, pull this back and get it to absolutely snap to this area. And I mean, this is the part of why this is a study to me is because I will just experiment with various examples of how this can work, how it can break down and just try to understand the type of pitfalls that users are gonna run into whenever they're using Blender and those sort of things. I like to have an idea of what kind of problems people are gonna experience before they write me about them. But let's control Z and we'll put this back at the beginning. And that's actually a better result than I got in my last two studies. So we'll press control A, visual geometry to mesh, and let's just hit it with a sharpen. Let's shift click sharpen and just roll the wheel down. And this is what we have. And everything looks pretty devastated, you know, like a burnt out rainforest but we can turn this around pretty easily. So I'm gonna press K while I'm in select tool. Select tools, just, um, just our baby. One day it will evolve into a um, topological solving madhouse, but it's already on its way. So we're just cutting a knife all the way around. We could be using Blender's knife for it, but um, I'm always contemplating how we can uh, further improve upon things. In fact, I press spacebar to apply because I don't want to lose that. And then I jump back into the tool and we could just press J and just bring up join. And we could just start joining some areas, giving them a uh, proper ending. And we'll just uh, gradually go through and refine this area repeatedly. In fact, I always forget to use the space mouse on my desk. So let's use that to just make maneuvering around a little bit easier. And topology is a game of, of choosing which geometry is more important and which geometry is imposter doubles, you know, like a game of Among Us, but with polygons. So doing this over and over, um, I've definitely become fairly good at picking which ones are the most crucial ones. And really the answer is if you see it about to turn your form, that's the one that's important. If it's on a flat surface and it's doing nothing and it's an intermediate point, then that means that it's worthless. The only ones that matter are the ones that are actually connected to the cylinder itself. So we'll just press space bar and apply this phase. And I've been contemplating a um, gravitate option inside of this where um, you know, theoretically one could select a point and let's also run and remove doubles on this and it would just gravitate all the nearby points to it. So as I work and jump between the blender tools, I also contemplate how we could 
definitely benefit from making a version of Select Tool that is um, very multi-oriented because the ability to go in and, and, and just drop things of um, importance very fast and yet still jump over and grab an edge and dissolve it on the fly. These are the sort of things where, you know, I feel Blender still has this beat, but I also see some areas that we can improve that would um, bring Select Tool over. So let's actually jump back into Select Tool and we'll just choose Merge. And Merge is just a fun time, you know, not sitting here trying to dish this tool, just letting you know that inadequacies are something that I look for in everything and I'm always contemplating how to further refine so we'll just get in, merge, merge, merging things over. And because we don't have zoom enabled for my users, I'll just use the space mouse to zoom in. But that's also something I was adding to the list, just kind of running this through the uh, tool test paces this morning, just thinking out loud uh, as far as what I want to see change with this. and directions we can go because you know I feel that there is a conclusion for hops out there but that conclusion involves all these tools being at their best I mean of course maintenance will always be a thing but the problems that we aim to solve I want them to be solved in a way where everyone who who looks at it being solved has an understanding of of the why and 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 also the how and also being able to follow the maneuvers you know like right now um, as I'm working you probably are only able to see the keystroke showing you know what I'm what I'm up to but there, there's always this um, thought I had where you know basically blender operations could also use some sort of operator panel to basically tell users about what's going on with them just kind of a, a serious overstretch of what our current operator draw does but I think about it all the time you know when blender is able to um, educate at the same time as uh, casual work then you know it's truly set you know a tutorial won't be needed on every little thing you know I dream of a world where just blender tells enough information that just working is an educational experience we'll just M merge at center merge here dissolve that Whatever's happening here, it needs to stop. We'll select that point and reselect that one and then remerge it last. And so now we're basically looking at the final result. You know, this video is only seven minutes in. So uh, just as a metric, you know, we could have been talking about, you know, normal transfer and hacking our way through it. But by getting in and just giving this thing a deep topological analysis, we're able to get a pretty nice result without a whole lot of difficulty. However, these very, very near points are very near to my heart and they have to go. But here we see this area looking fairly solved aside from a few areas that could use a little R&R. &R. So let's relax some of this geometry, quantify where it's needed. Same thing here, you know, we could quantify all the way around but it's an art to do it strictly where it's needed just to get enough of the surface to have a fine result. But now we look at our sphere and we have cut that shape into it. And this is actually a really difficult shape to me in order to cut in. In fact, it gets even more difficult from here. Let's uh, select the shape and control click bevel to add a bevel modifier. And we see that it's just devastating our shape. So let's alt scroll to ensure that we're able to bevel the entire boundary around it by lowering the angle. And we got a fairly nice result, except this also exposes some of the limitations of bevel itself and how bevel can break down in a multi-transitional corner turn like this. I mean, this is actually a really crazy shape in regards with the bevel modifier and what we can be doing with it. In fact, you know, only in 2.8, with the new miter improvements and the great work that Howard's done that a bevel's even able to look this good, which, you know, I really can't complain about it. You know, uh, I, I'd imagine him asking, you know, what would a better result be? But that suffices, that truly suffices. Blender's getting better and better um, as we continue moving, but I'll slap a weight of normal on it. And despite the little bit of pinching happening here, this is actually a 
pretty nice result. I mean, we probably want to lower the bevel with the mount to just mitigate that, but we could also shift it over to weight and just begin giving less in certain areas. But instead at this point, I'm just going to jump into box cutter and we'll just cut a few circles in here. And with this shape, if we wanted to, we could Alt X, mirror it to the other side. I shift clicked this one in order to keep it active. And then I'll click this one without shift in order to close it afterwards. And we just press Alt V and turn off the wireframe. And this is our result. In fact, I see that this loop got too close and this area could just be resolved just a little bit just to ease the shading. But with these sort of things, you know, it's, it's always a um, study of, you know, you, you, you never win. You just do a little better every time. In fact, this area I see could use a little more relaxation, which in my, in my sense, I mean to just slide geometry away from each other, kind of lessening the stress. And we'll just do the same thing here. Just kind of quantify a little bit just to uh, get things evened out. But as you see, just like that, we're able to get in, use exact, and merge these surfaces without a whole lot of issue. In fact, using the select tool, uh, getting things topologically sound wasn't very much of an issue. And now at the end, we're just looking at this in look dev mode and just slapping various blank materials on it. In fact, I'll press C to jump over to color since I never do color. And let's just find a nice colored material to leave this on. And with that, I'll wrap up this video and I'll see you guys next time.